Alright guys, back with another video. So this one is going to be a long one, but I don't know how long it's going to be, so bear with me. Um, now this one is going to be about private equity and how private equity has been kind of destroying America from within. We know that uh, from Moran's Connect the Dot, um, you know, we've been talking about it for a long time. Um, if you've been in GME for a long time and watch Moran's, you would know this angle already. So... Um, nothing new here, but for those of you who have not been in, in the play and just, you know, come across this video for the first time, um, you know, it's not just Moran's who's talking about it, right? Other people are talking about it, but again, it's not related to GameStop at all. So this is why I showcase this one is because this things has been happening for decades on end but people are just not aware of it because they are you know changing faces and all that stuff this particular interview here was um made at march so um if you you know watch this uh, particular one i will link down below if you haven't but um just um you know google this particular title you would would you find this one by yourself if you like to but anyway so let's let's take a note on what the the reporter is saying right here and i'll jump in a little bit here just to kind of uh reiterate a, a few things that kind of related to gamestop or or other company that that Morans has been mentioning throughout his connect the dot series okay all right let's go the u.s economy is being held hostage by a small cohort of financiers who run private equity firms, Apollo, Blackstone, the Carlyle Group, Colbert, Kravis, Roberts. These See, these these are familiar names that Marantz has been mentioning, uh, especially Apollo. Apollo is, is in AMC right now. <laughs> um, I don't remember who bankrupt uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. I'm sure, you know, Marantz could kind of verify that one. But if you want to look at, into that, um, but... All in all, all this group has been familiar names um, when uh, it comes to connect the dot, right? And let's go forward. As equity firms buy up and plunder businesses, piling on debt, refusing to reinvest, slashing staff, and often driving companies into bankruptcy. So this is their playbook, right? So um, what did they do? They are loading on debt. So that's why you have massive amount of debt for AMC to the point where they can't even pay off the debt. Now, the point of these particular, you know, uh, uh, private equity, I'm not saying all private equity is like this. It's just a handful of those people, okay, of those firms that are designed to do this thing in order to make quick bucks here from a retail investor or whatever. But for any type of company at all, it, has to, it, has, it doesn't have to be um, a particular company. Or sector, and they go after every, everything that will make them a buck, right? So, um, and again, like to to get into those company, the point is not to sustain the company at all. The point is to uh, to bankrupt the company from within. The object is not to sustain businesses, but to harvest them for assets to make a short-term profit. Those who run these firms, such as Leon Black, Henry Kravis, Stephen Schwartzman, and David Rubenstein have amassed personal fortunes in the billions of dollars. There you go. So those names, I bet you anything, you probably sound familiar to you. So, um, But look at those names and see their, their history, right? Of what, where are they coming from? The wreckage they orchestrate is taken out on workers who lose jobs or see salaries and benefits slashed, taken out on pension funds that are depleted because of usurious fees or abolished, and on our health and safety. Residents of nursing homes, for example, owned by private equity firms, experience 10% more deaths because of staffing shortages and reduced compliance with standards of care. Private equity o owns hospitals and has created a health crisis. Nursing shortages have contributed to one of every four unexpected hospital deaths or injuries caused by errors. The private equity firms do not serve patients, but profits. They have closed hospitals, especially in rural America. They cut back on stockpiles of vital, vital medical devices, including ventilators and personal protective equipment. In 1975, the U.S. had about 1.5 million hospital beds and a population of about 216 million people. Now, with a population of over 330 million people, we have around 925,000 beds. 
56% of Americans have medical debt, even though many have insurance, and 23% owe $10,000 or more. Emergency room visits and emergency rooms are often run by private equity firms, contributed to medical debt for 44% of Americans. At the same time, the healthcare system, because of this slash and burn assault, was unprepared to handle the COVID epidemic, seeing 330,000 Americans die during the pandemic because they could not afford to go to a doctor on time. These private equity firms, like an invasive species, are ubiquitous. They have acquired educational institutions, utility companies, and retail chains while bleeding taxpayers of hundreds of billions in subsidies made possible by bought and paid for prosecutors, politicians, and regulators. Joining me to discuss private equity firms and their assault on the economy is the Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Gretchen Morganson, who, along with Joshua Rosner, wrote, These are the plunderers, how private equity runs and wrecks America. Let's begin with what they are. They've just rebranded themselves, uh, but I'll let you start. Well, Chris, these are the old um, takeover titans that we started to learn about in the 80s. RJR Nabisco was the big deal that focused everyone's attention on them. And they just rebranded themselves, as you said, into something called private equity. A little bit more genteel, sounds like it actually might be fair, equity being that word. Um, so these are just those corporate raiders that really were sort of fearsome. And, uh, you know, Congress at that time was concerned about what they were going to do to the economy. Congress lost interest and went on to the next thing. And, of course, they did then go on to, over the next few decades, really um, pillage the economy and workers and pensions, as you pointed out. Explain how they work, because it's all about debt. Um, and, right. and what's interesting from your book is that they actually don't put very much money. That's but right. I'll let you explain just the mechanics of it. Okay. So pay attention to this, because, again, the playbook is still being played right in front of us. And, of course, like Moran says, broken down many of the companies that are doing this right now at the moment you know big lot that's one a uh, coal that's one but bath and beyond as i mentioned before um amc right now right we all know about these companies all of them are uh, private equity owned of course dollar general you know i just saw another um uh what is it? Uh, another documents about how Dollar General would go to this this um, very uh, underserved community and kind of wreck them in in a in a sense that you you would um, kind of cost the price to go up and like they they don't have their own price on the shelf and so anytime that they ring people up, it's just change the price. Um, the price just increased by itself and they don't, again, some of them notice it, some of them don't notice it, right? And so um, that came out to be like, why is the price not consistent um, and all that stuff. So again, it's very shady business practices that these people are doing in order to, you know, kind of raid the, the low income served community here. These firms, first of all, they raise money for their buyouts. They don't use a lot of their own money for those buyouts. What they do is they go to public pensions, they go to endowments, they go to the big institutional investors and say, we're putting together a fund, we're going to buy out companies, we're going to make them more efficient, and then we're going to sell them in five to seven years at a profit, and you will be able to reap those gains along with us. But yes, as you point out, the private equity titans do not put a lot of their money, of their own money at stake here. Um, one to 2% of these funds are typically the private equity firm's money. So after they have raised the money, they go out and look for companies to buy. And they um, really home in on companies that have assets that they can strip. Assets. These are often physical assets that they can sell. Physical assets like real estate. Now, you pointed out that they've taken over a lot of retailers. When that was going on, often they would be buying retailers that had, you know, either very, very favorable leases or actually had land underneath their stores that they could then sell at a profit, stripping the company. It's really not about operating the company, as you say. It's really about stripping the assets, uh, extracting the money that they can from it. It's an extraction business. So they buy a company, they then find out how they can make it more efficient, um, which means usually firing many people, um, stripping the assets, selling them off. And sometimes they sell the assets and they get all their money back initially, very, very early on in the process. And what's left really is a carcass. What's left is a company that has now got enormous amounts of debt piled on top of it. 
that's what's happening in AMC right now, right? And people are, are being pumped into buying AMC thinking that they have something there. Well, it is just a carcasses of a freaking shell of a company. And who's facilitating it? Adam Aaron. These, these transactions are funded by debt. But it's not the private equity firm that takes on the debt. It's the company they're buying. So if they buy a retailer, they'll put a load of debt on that retailer. Suddenly, that retailer has way higher costs of operating. Sounds familiar, right? Why is AMC unable to freaking, you know, uh, just barely operating at a, you know, at a profit? Not even a profit, you know, um, sometimes even at a loss because of the operating costs alone, not including the, um, you know, the interest that comes along with those debt either. Which means that then they have to cut costs elsewhere, fire people, deplete pensions. It's really a game where a very narrow slice of people win and a huge circle of pain of losers is involved. Every and that also includes shareholders that buying into this company thinking that they're a turnaround company. Okay, so this is what GME doesn't have. This is what Ryan Cohen pushed out of GME. GME was on its way to do that, to be that. But thank goodness we have Ryan Cohen to stop the bleeding, to, to you know, create the, the movement that it is. Imagine if you just walked into this type of company and you know that's a massive amount of debt, knows a mass, massive amount of, you know, um, uh, again, like hem, uh, mayhem that's happening in the, the company. It's going to take some time for GME to fix its, its you know, the book in, in that sense. And now we are able to do that. When I say we, I mean Ryan Cohen and the, the leadership before him um, was able to do this. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking about uh, old leadership before Ryan Cohen got in. I'm talking about Marcy Farlong here, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, um, and again, so this is what's happening to the company um, before for GME. AMC is still going through that. So that's why you see the stark differences between the two companies that I, this is why I hate it when people say, AMC is the same as GME. They don't understand what's going on behind closed door here. Everybody else is on the losing end. Well, when, because it's about short-term profit. Um, you have an example in the book about uh, a nursing home system. Uh, this was an amazing story. And so what they do is they, they sold the physical buildings that had the nursing homes. Uh, and then suddenly these nursing homes had to rent, I think it was $40,000 or something more a month. I'll let you explain. So they actually carry out policies, not just loading it up with debt, but also carrying out policies that physically dynamite or destroy corporations or businesses that before they arrive, you have uh, the story of Samson and I, we'll talk about the steel mill you write about, but that were healthy. Absolutely. So the nursing home company that you were talking about, Manor Care, it was very um, well run. It, the reason that the acquisition was made, and this was Carlisle Group, which is one of the top private equity firms. And let me just interrupt because as you point out in the book, they, like James Baker, they pull in heavyweight political figures once they're out of office to run these groups. Carlisle, unlike m the other firms, <clears throat> which are located in New York and are the Wall Street type of folks, um, Carlisle is a much more, um, it's based in Washington and it's much more politically astute. And as you say, they hire, there's a revolving door with government officials, very high powered government officials. Anyway, they bought Manor Care. It was a very well-established, well-run um, national nursing home company. They immediately sold the land under the nursing homes and made the nursing homes pay rent. They took out the equivalent of what they had put into the company. They received that when they sold the land. So they were free and clear. Everything after that became gravy for them. So they really weren't concerned about, you know, the profits. They were already in the money, as they say. But the company, the, the nursing homes, suddenly had to pay exorbitant rents and that meant that something else had to give. And ultimately, what ended up happening was an enormous Medicare fraud that was designed to really um, charge, overcharge Medicare for services to these residents. 
and the stories are absolutely gut-wrenching. Um, there were some whistleblowers who came forward talking about what they were seeing, and the DOJ took the case, but then blew the case. Um, but some of the tales that these whistleblowers told about forcing people, forcing aged, frail, ill residents to go through, um, you know, in incredible uh, um, rehabilitation that they didn't need in order to bill Medicare for these um, processes. It, it was just shocking. Well, you see that with, you write about the ER, that they, what do they call surprise bills? I can't right. remember the term yes, you use. Right. Uh, they will hospitalize people who don't need it. It's all about money. And then, of course, the care is substandard because of the staffing is cut. That's right. That's right. So ultimately, Manor Care was driven into bankruptcy by the people that bought it. But they didn't lose because they had done this transaction to buy the land underneath all of the nursing homes. You call these private equity firms, these are your words, money-spinning machines. Before we go into specifics, talk about, because the, the amounts are staggering. I uh, mean, we can talk about the charming is it Leon Black. Um, the, 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 these people are bringing in personally, you know, the, these figures, billions upon billions of dollars. Talk about the amount of money they're, they're generating. The net worth of the people running these companies are in the tens of billions. Um, in the COVID years, I think Steve Schwarzman's, um, he is the head of Blackstone. I think his net worth doubled during COVID. Um, I think it went up to something like 35 billion or something. Anyway, uh, these companies extract enormous fees for their operation. They extract fees from the pension funds that invest with them. Well, I just want to interrupt you because the, the deal is they get the pension funds to invest because supposedly the pension funds will make a profit. Right. But then, as you write in the book, they force the pension funds to pay them management fees. Right. And you have cases in the book where they're not even doing anything. Right. But I think, if I remember, they're pulling like 10%. I mean, a lot of money. And, and these pension funds, in the end, don't actually make a profit. Um, many times they don't. Sometimes they do. Um, so mm -hmm. the rule of thumb is called 2 and 20. So they'll get 2% of the assets under management as a management fee every year, and then 20% of the gains that they make. And so this has translated really into a billionaire making machine for these guys that run these firms. And yes, it's really staggering when you pull back the curtain on some of their practices. One of them that's really, really outrageous is if they, when they buy a company, they will often install people on the board of the company to you know, watch over it, to make sure that they're going in the right direction, for them anyway, not for the company necessarily. And they will um, charge them uh, fees over a period of time for that their management expertise okay <laughs> these fees are generally contracted on a 10-year life but many of these deals they end up selling between five and seven years that's the goal as you pointed out the short-term <clears throat> nature of this and so but the company has to pay for the full 10 years of the fees that the uh, private equity firm is charging them and that's money for doing nothing that's just one of the tricks of the trade that they do to generate billions of dollars for themselves while they're really, really impoverishing so many other people. See, like, and then they go bankrupt the company and the uh, company that was supposed to be profitable, they're not, just like, you know, uh, uh, GME. And of course, on top of all of that, um, I might just end it here and I'll let you guys kind of finish the whole um, document here. It's very informative, so you have to kind of thought about that. But we've all, we all known about this already through Morant. Like he's been covering this for, for a long time. So, you know, this is just a, an, um, you know, just to showcase other people as well that are talking about the same thing, not just Moran's being delusional over here, okay? Um, so that's why I, I kind of like um, got interested in this type of things too. To kind of, yes, trust, but verify. I trust Moran's, but I do go on and verify it by myself um, just to, to see if those uh, information is actually, you know, correct. But, um, you know, those those playbook is being played out right now in, in many companies that I just mentioned above. Um, and if you're not kind of wise to it, you're not going to understand why these companies are, are being attacked um, by the media. And of course, the media is being paid by these people as well. The same, the, the same uh, cloth. That's why every single reporter that is coming out at 
you know the the major financial network they come out and kind of have the the, the same type of tone right every reporter oh GameStop is this and that this there's, there's a guy in the Schwab network um I hate the his tone on on GameStop every time he he covered it it's just like again these are actors right they're being hired to play a role in um, you know bashing the company in order to make you feel a certain way about the company um, whether it's to you know pump you up into buying something that they hold or to to sell something that you shouldn't be selling if if it is a, a valuable thing for you to have right um, if they're shorting you know certain instruments certain security then they're, they're not going to tell you to buy into it they're going to bash it they're going to um, you know there's a start strategy that they use to it's called pump and dump right that's the company that they want you to buy and they would dump on you um, and then poop and scoop the company that they want to buy themselves but they you know um, would poop and scoop it later on in, in in order for you to stay away from them from those company that you should be buying into Again, this is just a trick that I've learned based on my experience in crypto even as well and the stock market, you know. Um, and this is why, again, uh, I'm in, in GameStop because of the way over negative sentiment on, on the company itself um, for no apparent reason sometimes, right? Um, but anyway, so let me end it here. Of course, like it's like 20 minutes already. On this um, video but yeah I hope you inform yourself and of course uh, go to this channel and search for this particular video to finish it so